Howdy folks, welcome to another edition of TFL Talk. This is TFL Truck, and today we have a very special guest. Oh, Mr. Truck. That's right. <laughs> Thanks my, for being here. <laughs> my buddy Andre's here, uh -huh. and we are doing a top eight trucks that we are anticipating with, with actually great anticipation coming in the near future. And let's just get right into it. Why don't you start with number eight? Absolutely. But before we start, this episode is being brought to you, sponsored by Airlift Suspensions. Very good suspension system. I've used it on my trucks. And they were the one of the pioneers. So, okay, why don't you start with number eight? Number eight is the 2017 Honda Ridgeline. Okay, breathe. Ridgeline, is that really a truck? It's, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna say, I think I know exactly what it is, and I think you're gonna agree with me. It's a sport utility truck. It's a front wheel drive unibody wheelbarrow. But it has a, okay, it's a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Whoa, okay, so. No, actually, it, I, I like the looks of this one. Really? Yes, much better than the last model. Last Agreed. model was that bulldog, bullfrog, whatever it looked like, but yeah, this one actually looks like a truck. I mean, it looks like an El Camino, but it looks like a truck. And you can't really argue with the fact that, I mean, it is really built for utility. I mean, you have a tailgate that opens two different ways, you have that extra um, yeah, the tub. thing under the bed. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like that is pretty cool. I mean, I, I think that a lot of people who just don't need the capability of a mid-sized truck, this is something perfect for them. If they live in the city and they just need to do DIY stuff, you know what I mean? So yeah, haul the lawnmower around and exactly a, few, a little exactly, bit of furniture. I think that that is exactly what it is. Um, uh, and we'll get one in the near future, and we're definitely going to test the hell out of it, I promise Well, yeah, you. Roman tested at the launch event, yeah. but I, I haven't had a chance to drive one. But mm, I am looking forward to it because Honda, they're not following the cr basically the, the crowd of the midsize segment. Ver you know, yeah. it's not body on frame. So yeah, they're trying to hit more of probably a, um, an urban customer. So I'm yeah. really excited about that aspect of it. All right. Uh, how about number seven? You want to take that one, Ken? The Titan Light Duty, that's mm -hmm. uh, that's different than the XD. That's right. So <laughs> I've got one coming next week. Well, I need, Which I've, got one? The, I've got the gas version, I guess. I've oh, got okay. The, so well, it's, the it's gas, still an XD. XD. Yeah. yeah. So the light version, I mean, I'm, I'm still kind of in the dark on that. So you're pointing me to the one that I don't know <laughs> enough about. That's exactly that's, what I was trying to do. Well, here, yeah. here let me, let me, me explain. In, okay, explain. Let me explain. So <laughs> 2016, the Titan XD came out. Right. And this is a beefy frame, right? It has a five liter Cummins. You know all about this. And mm -hmm. we've tested it on like Gauntlet and many, many times, everything, yeah. and we did a lot with it. But for 2017, a light duty version is coming out. And here are the differences. It has a smaller nose. Um, it's a little bit lower and the fenders are a little bit shorter because it does not have to accommodate the five liter Cummins. It's also, good. the platform is not as heavy duty either. No, it has a unique frame, you know, lighter components. So it's basically in the heart of the half ton market. Only gas engine, I imagine? Yes. Okay. Um, so the gas V8, the 5.6 liter uh, V8 will be in the light duty mm -hmm. and potentially also the V6. But we don't have a lot of information on the V6 yet. Seven speed automatic, I uh, imagine? Yeah, yep. yeah, seven speed. There'll be several different bed configurations and cab configurations, unlike the XD which is right now just one cab right. and one bed. This will have a variety of different ones and those will, you know, that'll compete right in the middle of the segment. So it should be interesting. So that'll be the true replacement of the old Titan. That's exactly Yeah. Right. yeah but it will look very similar to the XD. Yeah. Okay. In fact, you know, the headlights, the grills are going to be very similar yeah. to the XD. So from yeah. afar, you might, say, you might say, oh, is that an XD or is that a light duty? Yeah. But when you get up close, you will know. I like the look of the new truck, so I think that'll work out well, but. Interesting, all right. So let's go to um, number five, which is the 2000. How about sorry, number, number six? six? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the six. <laughs> sorry, six is an important truck. <laughs> <laughs> the 2017 Ford F-150 with a 3.5 liter EcoBoost and most importantly, the 10 speed automatic transmission. Now that truck, we can go on for hours talking about this. There's so many new things with the injection, du dual direct injection and port. So you got, I guess you're going to have to put a lot of fuel in it, but they're saying it's better. But the cool thing about this transmission, I, you know, in the 80s when I drove semis, we had 18-speed Road Rangers. That was six speeds of underdrive, six speed direct drive, six speed overdrive. And that, this here, I mean, 10 speeds, you've got six gears of, you call it underdrive, and you have one direct drive, seven, mm -hmm. three overdrives. So you think about the power and how it holds the power, just like in a semi, when you can 20% spread between each gear, that means that you're going to keep your peak torque band, your peak horsepower band between each gear. You won't drop off. So it should be incredible tow, or even for a half ton. 
But, you know, another thing about that, the, the bottom gear is 4.7. That's, That's first gear. My gosh. And see, semis did that. Back when I drove them, they were at 535. Now they're, well, semis, final drives, 355, 373, like pickup trucks. You think about a pickup truck like this, they're going to keep the same axle ratios for 17. Right. The 355, the 373s. But, you know, later on, they could get this down to a 305. And with a 4.7 first gear, you could drag, you know, rocks all over the place with that what, thing. Like stump That'll or? be unbelievable power. And then, you know, the overdrives, the three spaced overdrives, final is a 6.4.64. So, you know, you're going from direct drive one to one to probably an eight something to a seven something to a 6.4. I mean, you talk about fuel mileage. I mean, this thing ought to really be the king. But then, then you got all those fuel injectors. So that's true. What and, are you going to do? But what's the weakest point right now with the F-150 with the EcoBoost? It is its gas mileage compared to the competition. Am I right? Right. And I was surprised the 10-speed didn't come out two years earlier for the fuel mileage reasons. But you know, they they save bullets. They're trying to save their marketing thing for later. And also, they, they tested the hell out of it compared to some other companies that introduce eight and nine speeds that are maybe a, a year too soon. They haven't tested it quite enough. Maybe be. all the bugs have been worked out, right? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about the 10-speed. I'm just I'm just tickled well, to death. I don't think anybody's driven one before uh, from the journalist community. <laughs> but the thing is, <laughs> Maybe. it's an all-new 3.5-liter EcoBoost. Yeah. Right? Yes, new it second has, generation. It has the same displacement, so you think, oh, it's the same engine. No, no. they reworked everything on this yeah. engine. Yeah, yeah, it's different. Um, the new 10-speed automatic transmission. So I really want to get behind the wheel because... You know, we've been waiting for this for a long time. For quite a while, especially and with what we do. And the 10-speed is also going to be in the Raptor, which we'll talk oh. about later. Yes, yes well we the, will. The torque curve on this thing is so good, you know, like a diesel. Can you imagine putting that with all these other things, the transmission, the, the, the dual in injectors? My gosh, this thing should be a race car. And it has 450 pound-feet of torque. That's 30 wow, pounds. Okay, insane. you brag about 30 pounds, that's fine. What? Okay. I don't really care about 30 pounds, but no, all right. <laughs> well, then, oh, that's the Raptor, but I mean the 150. The 150 went up 30 foot-pounds, you're right. From the Raptor is higher, but the 150 doesn't have a big torque jump. Okay, let's move on, let's guys, move on. Uh, to number five, and go ahead and take that <laughs> And on, number right. five th is the 2017 Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. This is going to be, you know, an off-road monster, right? That's the whole point of it. Do you know anything about this truck, Kent? No. Okay. So I, I've driven the other version. The current but version. But yes. This is the 17. So what we're talking about here is a vehicle that has, really it's all about suspension, tires, and armor. Uh, it should have the same engine, drivetrain. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, it's going to have at least a rear locking dip. So like you said, exactly, the shocks are unique and so, heavy duty. Yeah. Uh, because they wanted to prevent overheating, you know, an off-road use, you know, when right, you're right. going over bumps and you're chattering across. Um, so it's accounting for overheating on the suspension um, and of course tires and also underbody protection you know big big huge uh, beefy skid plates with a little window to change your oil you know they're very very mindful of those things yeah um, and of course it has a train management system yes which is which is huge that's currently being used in the uh, Toyota uh, forerunner and that system and, is... And in the regular Tacomas, in the off-road in the off uh, versions. versions. Yeah. So this is going to be a step up from that, and it should make this one of the most off-road capable pickup trucks out there. So let's go to number four, the 2017 General Motors Heavy Duty. That's both the Chevy and the GMC. We've been waiting for that for a long time. Yeah. I mean, you know, Ford sells this stuff for way in advance. GM just kind of gives you little nibbles, but it, I've seen pictures. The hood is really cool. I mean, yeah. they're going to have a special intake, and it's great, and uh, you know, it's necessary. Well, explain to them what this this intake is. What we you know what it is. Well, it's uh, it's right on sits on top of the hood, and it looks like it's got a baffle in it. How it opens up, but the the problem people were thinking about is rain. Is rain going to come in the intake? And they're saying no, rain's not a problem. But they're saying you know, get behind a semi, it's in the rain. That may slosh some in there. Can so they afford rivers? Can they afford rivers with it? Well, you, you can't. <laughs> Obviously, you can't, Andre. Yes. But anyway, it, I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the only th little piece of information. I'm not getting torque numbers or horsepower. Do you have any of those numbers on no, there? Nothing. I mean, we, it's we know top secret. We've been testing though. forever. And one of the, the theories we have with that is that they, they're waiting on their actual numbers to see what the Super Duty is going to be doing in terms of its numbers and possibly what, how RAM will respond. One of the things about General Motors is that they've been on the bottom of the power numbers. Right, they are lowest for towing capacity and trader capacity, and it's it's a shame because they sit back and wait, and I would like to see them take a lead again. Yeah, being a little bit you more know? assertive would be a yeah, good thing. Yeah, would be. But but here's the bottom line: they've won a lot of Gold Hitch awards by using that recipe because, despite the fact they may not have the numbers on paper, 
they make pretty damn good trucks. So they definitely compete regardless of the fact that they're holding back. Oh, yeah, they, they do a very good job. They always surprise me. But, uh, yeah, they, they don't have to be, I guess, the most innovative company to still sell very well. But two years ago, we saw prototypes of these trucks. All over literally. the place. Oh, too. years ago. And yeah, it's been going on. That masking on the hood. We were yeah. wondering, oh, why, what, what, what is going yeah. on? Yeah. Because there was yeah. a, and now yeah. we know it's a hood scoop. And they showed what the Denali GMC, Sierra, mm -hmm. heavy duty. And yeah. also the, uh, what is it, the high country LTZ, you know, the highest level Silverado. But they have hood scoops that are a little different designed. So they're trying yeah. to keep them a little bit they unique. Look, they, they look cool. It's nice to have a real hood scoop instead of some glue on thing like a lot of truck yeah, companies. Yeah, like yeah. a plastic. I, I like the real stuff. I just yeah. don't like being teased for years before the truck comes. <laughs> I mean, this teasing is going on. Come on, Jim. Stop teasing us. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to number three, and that is the 2017 Ram Power Wagon. I'm excited about that truck. Yeah. yeah, even though it hasn't changed anything other than decals, but... Okay, it's been more than decals. <laughs> Simon right? more, Simon. more than Simon decals, goes. okay. I knew you were going to go there. Look, <laughs> this is what we know. That vehicle, which we have had a chance to see, but we haven't had a t chance to touch, <laughs> literally. To drive. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get our hands on one of those, I think, in the next two months. Or in the fall. Um, well, they, we don't have an exact date we don't have for an the exact power date wagon, yet. but what's changed? Well, Obviously, the grill. The grill it has the new, um, I like to call it the catfish grill, where it kind of comes down like a catfish. Um, and big, big ram letters on it, and new colors, and new decals. But most importantly, the interior has been upgraded because, I mean, it's an expensive truck, and it had a really cheap interior. Yeah. Now it's finally coming With leather around. options. That's, that's leather. true. I do like the interior now. I like those seats. Yeah, those seats are just looking fantastic. Well, and the seats have the tire pattern. Right, like the in. Rebel. Yeah, yeah so a Rebel. lot of it's like a Rebel. Which is really good when you need to scratch your back just a little bit and you're driving along because it's got a little bit of grab to it. Um, What's a manly looking seat? I like this. It seat. is a manly it's looking manly. seat. It's a manly truck, you know. And uh, recently we had an opportunity to pit the current model uh, Ram Power Wagon against the Ram Rebel. Uh, just to see which one felt like more of a proper everyday truck, and that's another video that I think we can link to. All right, let's move on to number two, and this is what we were talking about earlier, and that is the 2017 Ford Super Duty. Take it away, Kent. That will be, we'll be driving it in July, the end of July, Will, yeah. and, and so it'll be in the market right after that. There's no embargo on the thing, so it's going to be big. It's going to come out blasting and, you know, getting a lot of big trailers to tow with that, but... It's the camera truck. It's got seven cameras on it. I mean, you know, we talk about aluminum, all these other things, yeah. but man, this thing's a camera truck. It's oh, got I cameras all over the place. Oh, are for filming now? Yeah, yeah, that, and it's you know, six-speed automatic. We know probably that'll be a 10-speed in a couple of years, maybe 2020. But what worries me about these trucks, I mean, think about this truck now. It has the, the uh, yeah. besides, you know, the, the new technology in the interior, that advanced cruise control. What's that called? Adaptive cruise control? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's another couple, two or three thousand. You start adding up all the things on that truck, it's an, an F 450 could be $90,000. You heard it here for first. That's, that's my prediction. My gosh, can you imagine? I mean, you know, the average Joe out there with two jobs trying to pay for his truck, and the only ones who can afford this truck may be the uh, business owners with their wait, tax deductions. Wait, I have a solution, right? So you have to have your F. F450, right, Dually, yeah. which could be $90,000. We don't know the exact price. Right, right, right. But it could reach that high. You use it as a tax write-off. Exactly, but see, that's that's true. That's the business owners, there and that's go. like me. I can write off my taxes. There's a lot to do with that, well, Section 179. But I, I'm worried about the average Joe guy. They need a $40,000 truck. and I. So I guess there's something for everybody on this list. Okay, let's, let's whether talk it's about what's size. actually on the truck, though, that a lot of some people don't know about. This is going to be externally an aluminum truck. It's going to have Body, a new yeah. frame. It's going to have, I think they're going to revise the engine, but I don't know if they're going to replace the engine. It doesn't sound like it, but more to, well, it's Series 2 anyway. It's what they came out with in 15. So right. it looks like carryover, but they, but they will probably upgrade really numbers. Power ratings, yeah. No, right. or tow ratings. I know no, we're, we're right. setting up some big trailers, but. But uh, the starting price for a regular cab, eight foot bed, like four, four by two. It's like around thirty-three, thirty-four thousand dollars, isn't it? So yes. you could get a basic work truck and still be able to afford it if you're the average Joe with two For jobs. For the XL model, the yeah. beginner model. And that's but actually I buy XL models. I mean, I still get power door locks and windows and all that, but that's a pretty good value. But someday I'll buy that ninety thousand dollar. I am with race. you on that. One day I wish I could afford a ninety thousand dollar vehicle. But you know, the, the bottom line is that this is an all new truck, and it's one that we've had some exposure to, but we still don't have the actual numbers, and that hopefully will be coming. 
Pretty yes, soon. and it is the same exact cab on the F-150, so it's bigger now. The same cab they've had since 99, now it's finally going to be bigger, so your, your actual bed line's up an inch, a few other things, but actually going to better visibility, that big giant back seat that the F-150 has mm -hmm. will now be on Super Duty, mm -hmm. so I really appreciate that. I mean, there, there's, there's a bunch and of new things coming with it. a panoramic sunroof. Yeah, yeah. You have to have yes. that. You, you have, yeah, have and I'm sure the that. tailgate will drop with the button and all those fun things, and yeah, it's, but that's, it's that's toys, the toys, why, toys. That's the reason why it's higher on our list. Because it's a significant truck, right? It, it, it hasn't is been updated. Yeah, I mean, nobody else has many, aluminum many cabs, you know. It's yeah. so it had. That's very true. They've been using the same frame, the same cab since 1999. That's a long time. All right, let's move on to number one, and it's not a big surprise for many of you, and it is the 2017 Ford Raptor. Now, I've been told by some people that the SVT part is actually being dropped, and it's just going to be the Ford F-150 Raptor. Mm -hmm. So. Why is this a truck that all of us are kind of excited to get our hands on? Well, I think it's still probably the Ferrari of trucks. I don't know what it is, but it has that image that, first of all, it's a Baja racer, right? It's meant for high-speed off-road Yeah, I love running. sand dunes. So basically like a pre-runner truck for a real race, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's all new. I mean, once again, it's building on the aluminum cab that yeah. you know, started with the F-150, but they've updated the frame. It's a little bit stronger for the Raptor specifically. But, but, but you'd recognize this truck coming down the road. It's a very recognizable yeah. truck. It's wide. People I mean, see they have it, yeah. bigger shocks, bigger Great three presence. inch fork box, racing shocks. But the big news here is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Um, all of you guys um, out there have said, where's the V8? Where's the V8 in the Raptor? And Ford's saying no. I guess so. We have the V6. And it's going to be really powerful, and we have a 10-speed automatic transmission. Now, does it have that augmented sound like that's it did to the other the one? the only thing I'm worried yeah. about. Out of everything that's <laughs> coming out with this truck, and I'm fascinated by what they're doing with it, if they pipe in some sort of sound to sound like a V8, uh, it, that might be a bad thing. The truck guys do not like that type of stuff. However, have you heard uh, the way a V6 sounds, especially in a truck? Have you heard the way an EcoBoost sounds? It's unusual. And they can it tune is. that to some extent. Might be able to tune it a little bit. Uh, for example, um, Ford GT race car that's going to Le Mans, what, is it next week? Or yeah, a yeah really weeks? soon. Um, also has a 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Yeah, it's slightly different. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, but you can tune the sound of it. I mean, those, they can, it can be raspy, it can be loud. So I'm really curious at really how it sounds um, in, in real life. Now, with the TFL crew, the main reason why we're really looking forward to the next Raptor is because we have so much experience driving this one. All of us have had a lot of time behind the wheel, whether Romans liked it or not, and it has been a fantastic vehicle. So we already have a base for comparison. Now, the question is, of course, will this truck really do it off-road? Will it be able to go head-to-head -head with this one and beat it? And that's the big question. We think it'll be lighter, a great deal lighter, which is huge off-road and that it might have a lot more torque and horsepower. So all of those questions may actually be answered hopefully fairly soon when we get our hands on one. And how will it jump? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've jumped this We're one gonna before. We're going to chase coyotes with so, it. So, you know, we, we, <laughs> once again, we know what to do about uh, it. Okay. Uh, all right, let's move on to one, our final piece of this, which is our bonus section. Yes, but this is a humongous bonus it's section. It's a big, bo yeah, and right. It, yeah. And it has to do with rumors, right? Yes. And yeah. things that we kind of know are happening, but we don't have official word on. So first... Hyundai Santa Cruz pickup truck, go. Absolutely, nothing on it right now. <laughs> what they did was about a year ago, a bunch of Hyundai people said, yes, 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 we really want to build it. But nobody actually confirmed it. And then it went into a dark place where there is no information coming in or out over several months. Well, they're wanting to see if you're not the only one that really wants this truck. I am not the only one that wants this truck. <laughs> you should actually read the comments we got I know, yeah. I know, it's cute. Okay, next, uh, an F-150 with a turbo diesel engine, go. Heck if I know. <laughs> That's a so, rumor. So it's a rumor, but the raw prototypes caught on yeah. the street with what the sounded like exhaust. a diesel yeah. uh, exhaust sound. And it kind of makes sense in some way. I mean, Ram has been very successful with yeah. an eco diesel. They've sold their, a lot of them. In their yeah. light duty truck. And they're already showing that the mid sized trucks, the uh, General Motors products, they're selling quite well with that diesel, even though it is a price increase in order so to get one. Ford is not saying anything official at do you, this time. Do you think it's a Ford diesel? Do you think it's a Land Rover like they started doing with 20 three, years ago? The three liter uh, Range Rover has a three liter yeah, diesel. They, yeah, they, they look like And also, a Ford Transit has a um, 
commercial diesel. Who makes that diesel? The van diesel. No one's that European? Sure. No idea. Okay, okay, next. Colorado ZR2 off-road monster truck. We actually have seen, as many of you have, uh, the um, spy photos of this vehicle, prototypes, running around testing the new suspension and the new front end. Remember when it showed up, the concept of the Chevy Colorado ZR2 showed up in yeah. Los Angeles? And yeah. it looked absolutely dynamite. It was amazing. And I, you know, I'm stunned that it took them so long to actually consider building this. Well, so many of you guys want this, and I don't blame you because, I mean, come on. <laughs> it looks like it would be the most dominant off-road vehicle out there in its class. Now, next is FCA products. We have yes. a lot to discuss here. So, Tons. first of all, the 2018 next generation of the Ram Light Duty. Yes. Is it coming? What is it going to be like? Uh, there are some patent um, applications and patents that are floating around there. A lot of rumors, but once again, nothing official here. And a much lighter truck. That's the last thing I heard is that you know, it's going to be a much lighter vehicle. And that's an 18, two years away yet for that. Probably. Okay. Um, next, Ram small pickup. We saw images of a Fiat Toro yes. European truck testing in the United States. Now, I know a lot of you guys are against the idea of having a car-based pickup of some sort. Uh, are you, are you a well, utility vehicle. It may be the future. <laughs> I don't know. But, but think about it this way. I mean, the Ridgeline does cater to people who really don't need the heavy-duty capability of a mid-sized truck. Well, if that vehicle sells well, there's no reason why Ram wouldn't put out a vehicle to compete against it. So it may very well be built, and it may be going slightly against the Wrangler pickup truck. Yeah, it looks cool. But different audiences, <laughs> right? You know, completely different. The Fiat Toro uh, vehicle ha is sharing some components with like a Cherokee right. uh, platform. That's what we And we're the hearing. Wrangler, obviously, frame. I mean, they're going to be very different trucks, and I think they'll cater to two different audiences. And if Ram does that, then, and, and Jeep, then they're going to own the market pretty much. That's, that's at least the theory. That's a lot of rumors, but I'm really excited about the truck world in the truck market because we have, you know, what, eight new trucks, uh, refreshed mm -hmm. trucks coming in 17, right. and probably a lot more in 18. I'm super excited. Yeah, uh, the TFL truck crew is going to have an opportunity to drive so many new vehicles, it's going to be insane. And we're going to see if we can keep Mr. Truck from tearing up a ridgeline and throwing <laughs> it around and, you know, kicking it. You know, no, no kicking trucks. See if I can lift it off the ground. <laughs> Change right. the spare tire. There you go. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, go back to tfltruck.com uh -huh. and... MrTruck.com for more news views and real world reviews and all kinds of truck stuff. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Have a great day. See you later. Bye. Did you know that the mid-size truck market is red hot? Behind me is the new Chevy Colorado and they can't build enough of them. Here is the segment leader. It owns almost 70% of the mid-size truck market, the Toyota Tacoma. And yet, that truck is also increasing in sales because the segment keeps increasing. And now, here comes the second generation Honda Ridgeline trying to get as much of that mid-sized truck market as possible. And yet Honda has taken a very interesting approach to competing with these two trucks. It's the most car-like. And we're going to find out just how car-like it is when we take all three of them for a ride. And that is coming up right now.